Auto hockey has a surprisingly complex history, and if you're trying to get into Windows automation today, it might not be clear which version to download. Look, I'm just going to tell you up front, you should be downloading the current version, but stick around if you want to know why. Auto hockey was first released in 2003, but that isn't the version that we're all using today. Originally, Auto Hockey was based off of the AutoIt language that was released in 1999. The original author of Auto Hockey, Chris Mallett, wanted to add hockey support to his AutoIt scripts, but the AutoIt team wasn't really interested in implementing that. So he decided to make his own scripting language, starting from the at the time open source AutoIt language. Of course, as things tend to do in software, their two languages quickly diverged into completely different things almost 20 years later. Chris developed Auto Hockey for many years until October of 2010, where the Auto Hockey we know today is born. Man, announcements being made in forum posts like this really brings me back. Uh, anyway, Chris lost motivation by this point, and the overall community was trending towards a more advanced scripting language than what he was envisioning. This led to a break in the original release, and the Auto Hockey L branch was formed. Today, we distinguish these versions as version 1.0 and version 1.1, respectively. The L in AutoHockey L stands for Lexicos, who was maintaining this new branch of AutoHockey. And also in this news post, he talks about version 2, which hadn't been started yet, but the community wasn't really interested in that. They wanted what AutoHockey L was doing. It had Unicode support, it had arrays, objects, classes, and probably most importantly was the 64-bit support, which... Uh, Remember, in 2010, that's when a lot of the CPUs were trending from 32 to 64-bit. Now pretty much everything today is 64-bit. In February of 2014, the first alpha branches of version 2 started to come out, and it's been slowly iterated onto this day. We're going to talk more about version 2 later. If none of that made sense, I really like this graphic from Mall SL, which uh, it, it looks pretty cool, but it doesn't really help you pick one. So we probably should start talking about that. All three of these branches, 1.0, version 1.1, and version 2, are displayed whenever you go to download AutoHockey from their official website. And in my opinion, this can be confusing for new users. Uh, at least it's easy to rule out that original Chris Mallet 1.0 branch. It was last updated over 11 years ago, and Windows 7 hadn't even been released yet. With the nature of Windows, I'm sure that there are people running older machines that have like crazy workflows that really need this old branch. But my opinion, it really shouldn't be on the main site like this. On the other versions page, I can get behind, though. The core syntax of AutoHockey has mostly stayed the same from version 1 to version 1.1, so a lot of older scripts that you might find on the internet from back then should still work. Of course, many, many new features from uh, version 1.1 won't be in version 1.0, so going back doesn't really make sense at all. As for version 2... I can see a thought process where someone would think they want to use it. It can be good to start learning about things on the bleeding edge so that once something does move over to a new system, you'll be already familiar with it. But in reality, version 2 hasn't really gotten off the ground in any real way. It's been in development for six years, and the community hasn't made a transition to focus entirely on version 2. The incompatible syntax with version 1 renders so many of the scripts that you can find online broken, and with 17 years of auto hockey community scripts out there, that's a big blow to working with version 2 today. Lexicos has also maintained that version 2 is still in alpha state, so it's expected that there'll be major syntax changes still that could happen whenever the language goes to release, which of course means that scripts you write might not work in the future. So again, in my opinion, this makes the auto hockey L branch the clear choice to commit to for now in the next couple of years. And of course, Auto Hockey is an open source language, so you're guaranteed to have your scripts working forever, barring like Windows updates and stuff. If version 2 ever makes the final headwind to become released, I'll be as happy as anybody to start hopping around and playing with it. But it's just not ready for public release. Sure, it's fun to play around with, but I wouldn't do anything that you want to last there. Yes, the classic Auto Hockey syntax from 2003 has a lot of problems. And if version 2 could just be magically adopted into the community with no drawbacks, that would be awesome. My favorite part about version 2 is how they're removing old methods of assigning to variables, and they're just trying to leave the expression syntax in. Right now, 1.1 lets you get away with so much awful syntax, and I really try my best to use expression everywhere because it's just better. But sometimes they make a typo, and because it lets it happen, I get mistakes in my programs all the time with that. 
Version 1.1 and version 2 are both under active development by LexCoS, but progress has been pretty slow. In the official repository, you can see commits from the current branch under master. And if you go under the alpha branch, you can see all the code for V2. And there is still activity going on, like, literally days ago. Uh, to me, it looks like 1.1 is mostly just getting bug fixes and minor features, while version 2 is getting some real development. But not being an insider, it's hard to know how far away this thing is actually from being done. But all in all, it's really hard to complain. Auto Hockey's free software and the fact that it's lasted for so long is really a testament to how strong this programming language is. I hope things eventually will move forward. And I also hope you enjoyed my useless history lesson today. If you like this video and you want to see more automation scripts and tutorials, check out my other videos. See ya.